so uh welcome vignesh to this alp productions podcast i welcome you and so yeah thank you uh, as uh, you are the participant of this alp international film festival 2023 so we we saw your film firstly so it was very good i don't i don't want to talk more about it because it's in the queue for the participants and it will be you know uh, it's at the contest so we don't want to talk about it but we mm-hmm. want to know that what is your experience when you made this film and what was mm-hmm. your budget and what inspired you while making this film so can you please tell me what was uh, please share your experience while shooting this film what what happened and what what was the motive behind this yeah so first of all i'll start with thanking alp productions like for shortlisting my film mm-hmm. and coming to the film so i guess film making is like something of an abstract thing for me like some films do happen i mean you don't plan for some films some films just happen in the go so i've been working as a writer director for almost like 3 4 years now oh. and this film actually just came to me i mean i didn't go into making this film It just happened in the flow so it is like we were making we had like a, a production house come to us a, basically a youtube channel come to us and say that they wanted to make uh, some content for their channel okay and in that thing uh, it was through my friend uh, rupak who actually owns a media house so okay. the contract had come to him and they had a contract of making five films for this youtube channel oh, okay. and i had a small brief from one of these uh, creative guys from their team saying that they actually need one of the films where a character is going through a certain grief or a guilt in his past and he has that conversation with uh, his or her partner basically and that's where this idea started like coming out like how would we want to flesh out this entire story or a 10 minute narrative that we want yeah yeah and that's how it began basically yeah. oh fantastic like uh, like someone approached you to make this film right so yeah So as you said that you are a writer and director for like three or four years. So what's your genre actually? I I, I you mm-hmm. have sent me a, a little message in the bar, uh, by that I I guess you are into like science fiction or something, right? Yeah, I like science fiction as a genre more. But uh, me too, actually, yeah, <laughs> I'm a big Nolan fan basically. <laughs> me too. <laughs> That's what I'm also Nolan fan. You, I I I've made a research paper on uh, Tenet and Insomnia film of Christopher Nolan. You know, yeah. Right. Yeah, go on, please go on. Yeah. Okay. I guess <clears throat> like Christopher Nolan, like Interstellar was the starting point for me to get into films basically. Okay. And getting that sort of uh, feeling to create something of my own. so that's where it started and um, so coming to the genre thing so there's no such genre that i believe like as a filmmaker i don't believe to uh, typecast me or put in one box and say that i want to make a film in this genre mm-hmm. so that's not how i start working on anything at the first place so it's the story or the theme or some inciting event or situation about or an idea that like starts getting me into working for a film that's okay. what i believe in rather than following a genre or selecting a genre of my own and working on that yeah so as you said that you are a very uh, high huge nolan fan so uh, like if, if you wanted to you know make a film a science fiction film so what do you do like you do uh, you use practical effects or you'll be using the uh, computer graphics <laughs> <laughs> so that again it depends in india i guess it's more easy to use vfx nowadays yeah than go for practical effects but again like given the budget and depending on what sort of content or script i'm working on i guess practical effects is the best thing i guess so like you're working in a script right now mm-hmm. uh, it, it, uh it's a science fiction genre so i've actually like the IMDb credits that I sent you. There is a film yeah, yeah. that we made a week to time travel. So it's already made film. It's a one hour long film. Okay. And I avoided like uh, so. What basically people think is like whenever you go into making a science fiction film is you need a lot of practical effects or yeah. VFX. You need he you need huge sets. You need to show future like yes. uh, high tech sets or like that stuff. So what I've tried to make in this film is like avoid that all and. but still build up to something that is science fiction mm. yeah uh, so uh, if if i talk about uh, time travel and science fiction so it's like you know 
just a second let me just put this on yeah so if if we talk about science fiction and time travel so i guess it uh, the the science fiction world is very vast you know if if we don't show a time travel so we mm-hmm. there are a lot of things to show in science fiction right so yeah. you know uh, i'm going to uh, uh, let me share you my experience in the science fiction genre i've made a film called one last time okay it's, it's about traveling like, traveling in 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 a in a time difference you know so the film starts in 2020 and it goes to 2024 mm-hmm. so um, so we we uh, we used all the practical effects we didn't use any cg mm-hmm. and we we just played with the editing and the shots so mm-hmm. <laughs> so if uh, if you're talking about the time travel so we use a transition when we jump uh, into yep. a different time you know mm-hmm. we just we, we we made a cuts in between the shots and we make that so it's like you know if we, we can uh, we can use this if we are making a science fiction and we make a practical effects mm-hmm. that's great so uh, if you wanted to share me your, your that science fiction film please share me I, i'll be watching so i'll be ex- yeah i'll be delighted to share it yeah Yeah, please share me because I I love science fiction genre plus the independent films because we in in the in industry of independent films we are making a huge content mm-hmm. and very different different content mm-hmm. compared to other industries you know so it's mm-hmm. and in this film festival when the submission we have we have we have seen the submission it's mm-hmm. it's humongous you know we are we are it, it is very difficult to choose a winner actually in this <laughs> it, it, it's too difficult but we are doing it. So uh, tell me when you made this film, you, 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 uh, when you have submitted this film, the film mm-hmm. you have submitted. What was the budget of this film, and how you so you cut out some uh, money because it was going above the budget? Or what what happened during the budget? Can you share me? So coming to the budget is like the film that is submitted to ALP for that's Love Forever. Yeah, it's, uh, pretty much like we wanted to make it as a very low budget film, like not spending on. uh actual locations and uh, not spending much on like uh, production stuff that we because yeah. production is the single most uh, what do you say the budget most of your budget goes there only yeah in to production so our concern was like so the brief also while like scripting or when the idea of this story came up it was like we have to shoot it in a single house okay so, yeah that was one of the I mean, not a condition or a restriction, but they said like, uh, if you want to cut down on budget, you simply keep two characters and you shoot it in a simple house. That's very affordable and you don't have to move too much. Uh-huh. But uh, as I felt like after making two three films, I felt like making a film inside a house is easy, but also difficult to keep your audience engaged. Yeah. like in today's time where the attention span of people is coming down it's very tough to keep your audiences hooked and mm. keep them engaged in that sort of a conversation where uh, two people are just talking and inside a house so i felt there should be some sort of moment inside the film or some sort of flowing aspect that should happen so that's why i decided i'll have this uh, film shot in two different locations okay is it's a 10 minute film and i thought that uh, there are two basically there are two chunks to the film like this film if you split it in uh, the film there will be two halves so for one half of the film it's a very joyous and a very happy going thing and then suddenly there's a steer or a shift in conversation yeah. and then actually it starts like um, getting a bit more uh, sad or a bit more uh, dark i feel mm. that i felt so i felt if i am showing this transition or this shift in the film there need to be two different locations to convey that sort of a mood mm. to the film yeah so that was a choice that i took while uh, scripting that i'll shoot the first half where these characters are like in a very isolated space and they are having their own uh, time and they are talking with each other they're recalling their own memories and past mm. life what happened in college and stuff like that and then when there is a shift uh, in terms of uh, emotion where one of the characters is pointing out something that actually hurts the other character and then we go up to this open vast space like the second first part is shot in a yes p- isolated park and the second half is like almost shot in a vast open beach side space where like you actually see the entire uh, like uh, see the en- like people all around 
like everyone is part of this world sort of a thing and with that's where actually these characters open up slowly yeah so uh, during the during the shoot mm-hmm. did you faced any problem regarding the uh, public or uh, in your team do you do you had any problems regarding like difficulties as you say uh, yeah so difficulties like um, it is pretty much easy for us one thing like was uh, because of the camera that we chose like what we didn't go did you use to yeah, we didn't go with a dslr so we okay. shot it on an iphone 10 basically yeah. mm-hmm. so that was pretty much like easy to like do this gorilla sort of shoot yeah. people are not like there's no attention around you <laughs> where people simply come and see what you do so that was pretty much easier for us like the first uh, place where the park sequence where it was shot like it was just near our house where we just called on the actors we had some uh, what do you say jugaad with the uh, par guy and we just shot yeah. in that place and the beach it was open like there were people around but still it was easy to shoot for us because everyone is minding their own business yeah <laughs> and we what was the doing... location actually what was the location of the shoot so it shot in uh, andheri versova In, in Mumbai, uh, in Mumbai, right? Yeah, in Mumbai. Yeah. Okay, okay. I I I visited Mumbai last year. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, we actually based in Delhi, and mm-hmm. uh, we we visit we visited Mumbai uh, mm-hmm. last. I I actually uh, to attend a film festival called Indian Film Project. Oh, I F C. Yeah. 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 Please continue. Please continue. So yeah, again, like coming to the budget. So it was basically like uh, we just hired. Uh, I already had an iPhone ten, so I didn't have to go into the camera. budget then i already then we just um, rented out these uh, lapel mics that we wanted with an zoom okay. one zoom h1 recorder okay so that was for the sound aspect so because that was a mistake that we had done with our previous film where we didn't like focus more on the sound so this time i actually it was through one of the people involved who told us like you could go ahead with these mics and they'll be helpful for you so we had just small budget to sound then most of the budget was like just for travel and food and we had to pay both our actors so and how many, was... uh, how many uh, how many how many crew and cast was there actually so the there were just for the cast there were the girl and the boy two okay. people then nice. i had my dop who had shot it okay. and we had a sound guy who was handling the sound so it was oh. like So Five, in, in the camera section, you had only your DOP only. Yeah, yeah. And in the audio section, I I guess the audio is not uh, that Im- the audio guy is not that important because the director can also you know hold that mic. Yeah, I could also hold, <laughs> yeah. but I wanted one guy to do that for me because I wanted to focus on the performance more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather I mean, than getting you know, it's, it's a very good idea. You know, because if you have a very uh, very minimum amount of team and even uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, shooting a film. but mm-hmm. you know a director have to you know look into everything yeah if, if you talk about so it's it's mm-hmm. very good i i really applaud you that you have made a very small team and you made mm-hmm. a very good film actually we we saw with the judges yeah. it's very good actually so do you uh, how do you uh, like uh, <laughs> it's it, it's a personal question from my side also that mm-hmm. what do you think that mm-hmm. if you <laughs> what matters actually in a mm-hmm. production pre production or post production like mm-hmm. what actually matters If you are shooting a film, the camera matters, or the sound matters, or the cast matters. If you are shooting a whole film, I guess the major, like, the, the major top three things. What do you think? The camera, the mm-hmm. cast, or the or, or the, the editing. Let's see, the editing, or the cast, or the or the camera. Just tell me. I guess you missed it. It should be the script first, because okay. nothing like is possible without the script. I mean, you have to have a. a script that you basically believe in i mean without that belief it's very difficult to convince the people that you're working with like okay. if i don't have a good story i don't have a good script it's very hard for me to convince my actors to get that performance out right okay. so it starts with a script mm-hmm. and then you start building a team a, a small or a core team that you need who you can trust on okay. so it starts with these actors then the technical team the dop the sound guy the editor and the post production team basically and once that's done you have to focus on your actors first i mean to get out the performances i mean it's i guess it they say that it's a director's job to get an actor's performance out and i believe in that mm. because um, you need to tell them like what do you want right because um, 
I have been with that story. I have been with that script for a longer period of time in comparison to those people. So I have to be in a place where I am able to convince them and tell them what my vision is and what these characters are. And then it's they are, uh, you say, their skills as well that comes on. They add on to it. As you said that uh, the script had with you very long time. So mm-hmm. do you think that during the shoot, if an actor say that I wanted to change this thing in this script in this world and I wanted to improvise it and you what do you what, what will be your uh, impression to him or her I am open to it like I personally feel like when it comes to Impressive. dialogues dialogues I am a very poor dialogue writer <laughs> I feel that so I need uh, some sort of support from actors there okay like they come with their own uh, capabilities okay. of the language right yeah. like with uh hindi being the dominant language here so that was very helpful with the actors coming up with their own words and stuff where i might have been wrong in terms of the script mm-hmm. for the dialogues so and also in terms of like some small hello uh vignesh i guess you your video is uh, stopped I guess some network issue. Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, it's good. Yeah. So there is a chance for improvisation, I feel, and it should be there, I guess. Okay, so uh, improvisation in dialogues or improvisation in the story? Not in the larger story perspective, I feel, because that is what is bound, right? I know yeah. what my start, middle, and end. So I, I can change small things in then that uh, entire narrative, but I can't change something that's a major. thing that will affect the narrative so small improvisations are fine which i feel in terms of actions and in terms of saying something on screen or emoting on screen in a specific way so right. i guess that is fine unless and until the larger pers- narrative doesn't get like mm-hmm. hampered yeah. yeah that's great so like uh, would you would you want to um, uh, say something about your film or any any thing you want to say to the audience if they be watching this do you want to say something so yeah so like um, i don't know like when we made this film and showed it to a couple of people uh there's a lot of people didn't like it they are own uh, belief about love or the current scenario about love or whatever they experience in today's time is a lot more different mm-hmm. and this uh, like if i could say something about the film is like the film actually showcases about being with that one person throughout your life and even if that person is there or not there with you but still thinking about that person and being with that person that's what the film is trying to say so a lot of people don't believe in that idea in today's time so they feel that the film is pretty much a bit regressive in its thought or <laughs> i believe in that old school love thing so that's what it, it, it's like i do believe also this old school love so mm. it's all right <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah but then there's still like as a major section of society or people who still believe in that i mean yeah you And know the yeah. world is changing there are gen z people coming so there are a lot of things in, you know mm. the taste are different mm, yeah yeah so um, i just wanted to say to the audience who would be watching this uh, podcast after the release uh, do watch his film love forever i'll be posting the link in the description after the film festival for sure so it's a very good film which is shot on iphone and we just re- uh, we we just did an advertisement for iphone <laughs> <laughs> so vignesh thank you so much for this interview you thank you have a very good heart and you made a very good film as my judge said this is their opinion okay because as it, it was shot in a very good location because mumbai is a very you know it's a very vast and very good location with the beaches so <laughs> uh, they they loved your film and uh, uh, we'll be uh, will be posting this uh, podcast in our uh, youtube channel as i have already mentioned the link of my youtube channel in the mail that we have sent to you and if you uh, wanted uh, if you wanted to know more, more about our uh, productions and this interview section and if you wanted to know when this interview will be scheduled or will be telecasted you can ping me on my whatsapp number i've already shared my whatsapp number in the contact section you can see okay okay so thank you so much for this and 
all the best for your future projects and please do send me that uh, science fiction film on my watch sure sure yeah right. sure yeah yeah you wanted to say something no yeah again i guess thank you to lp production like for shortlisting the film and making it part of this film festival i guess film festivals are uh, required thing in today's time for independent filmmakers because yeah. that's the platform to showcase your film then reach out to a wider audience i guess yeah and uh, i i do i do request you to send your to tell your friends your family your filmmakers uh, friends that on 23rd and 24th of september our film festival is going on and there will be a lot of different speakers from different worlds with different uh, countries so do join okay and tell your yeah, friends sure, sure, sure. all right thank you so much vignesh for this interview